Hey everybody, it's Andrew Cartwright here. I hope you are doing fantastic. We got a lot to cover. There's so much going on in stimulus and unemployment every single day. There's something to cover in almost all the states popping up with stuff all over the place about different ways that you can now collect unemployment that weren't available before, different reforms that are happening. It is hard, I know, for you guys to probably keep up. A lot of you might have even said, forget it, I ain't even trying anymore, which I suggest that you don't. As you know, I'm a big proponent of PUA, which I think that even with AOC talking about it, that we could see in the future PUA come back because as you know, and as many people now know in Washington, PUA, Pandemic Unemployment Assistance for Unemployed People, is for people that are independent contractors like 1099, freelancers like Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, all the different people that have, are part of that system that's been around for over a decade now, need support. And one of the great things about the pandemic is it exposed the fact that there's a lot of people that are left out of the system because they don't fit into the system. So lots of reform needs to be done. I got a lot to cover in this video. Unemployment is about to change for the better in a particular state. And also this could overflow into many states, but, and also AOC is talking about it as well. That's because one state is proposing unemployment reform that will make it easier than ever for people to get their hands on benefits. And as I've talked about before, Florida, Kansas, they are now reforming and paying people that are unemployed due to not being able to work because of the virus, as we have the new Omicron that's uh, creeped into the, the place now. I think there needs to be trading that goes on that's virus trading, right? They announce a new virus, the stock market goes down. You buy the virus dip, and then you wait, and then, I mean, literally, I watched the account go up 20, go down $20,000 and then come back $24,000 over the case. And those of you who watch my Patreon know this stuff. Find out which state is going to reform their unemployment. How over $87 billion was siphoned from the unemployment system. $87 billion, you might have been a victim of part of that siphoning. Um, and how job claims shot up to a shocking 222,000. I'll talk about that at the end, go over jobs reports at the end, and also what's coming down the pipeline as far as what you can expect from a lot of this news and what it means to stimulus. Hey everybody, it's Andrew Cartwright. I hope you guys are having a thirsty, thriving Thursday. Here's your unemployment and jobs report for and daily news financial news update for thursday november i mean uh, december 2nd 2021 god time time is flying right my goal is to give you the best information to access government and private money for yourself your loved ones and of course your family and your business uh if you are interested in a business loan i have loans in the description up to five million dollars 12 different programs and 75 banking partners that i partner with so check it out I've been, this company's been around since 2009, so I love helping people. We did a little over 67,000 applications last year, so if you need money for your business, check it out. Also, um, play the new game down below. We've got a new interactive game. It's completely free, giveaway prizes, so you can check that out. This channel is dedicated to personal finance, real estate, stock market, crypto, and credit, and other investments. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. If you're new to the channel, you probably don't know. I'm giving away $2,000 when we hit 200,000 subscribers. All you got to do is subscribe, like, and comment. We're going to pick a random comment in the comment section and give away $2,000. So just for being part of the channel, if you don't want to be a part of the channel, well, that makes me sad. At any rate, thanks to my Patreons who support the channel for as little as $3. But first, let's get into this. Let's talk about what's happening on the positive side in Michigan as we all know all, all about the negative stuff that's gone on there recently. Michigan lawmakers want to create a citizen advocacy for unemployment benefits. Basically, the purpose of a citizen ag uh, uh, what do you call it? advocacy is to create a relationship between the citizens who care about others and who are willing to respond to other people's needs. In the context of Michigan's unemployment, this would help claimants if they were unable to find the help through the Unemployment Insurance Agency. Does this sound familiar? So many people were stuck in this, this limbo. This is actually really cool that they're doing this reform. That's where the citizen advocates come in. They actually can help. 
The goal is to bridge the gap between the unemployment division and those who are struggling to gain access to it. A bridge of sorts, a bridge to fix the gap so many of you have fallen into the limbo of. This actually came after an audit of the Unemployment Insurance Agency showed that it was $3.9 billion, just poof, gone, in, pre, in pandemic related aid and financial assistance was overpaid to ineligible claimants. A question I always have, I'm leery of is, were they really ineligible? Or is this some kind of technicality that you now put in there and now you're disqualifying people? I, uh, I'm extremely you know, leery about these different agencies. Michigan's unemployment division has been getting pretty heavy criticism from Michigan's legislation for mishandling the eligibility criteria on applications and the process of applying for this kind of aid. The fact is some people don't understand the unemployment and how it works. I think a lot of their own people don't even understand how it works. Yet they need the financial aid. Unfortunately, that's why some of these people are being forced to pay some, if not all, of the money back. Some states have gone ahead and said, you know, it was our mistake for putting it out there, so go ahead and keep it. Because a lot of people don't have spent the money. Some people struggling to either understand the process, the requirements, or whatever the case may be. As always, I would love to hear your thoughts, your personal thoughts, where the best stuff happens in the comments, as you know. Are you from Michigan? And have you had issues with unemployment? And if you're in another state, what's going on in your state? Because I would absolutely love to know what's happening in your state, your neck of the woods. I know with 50 states and five territories, there's a lot to cover. Even Guam has lots of stuff that's popped up that we haven't, you know, we haven't really covered, but it's amazing what's happening in Guam. Meanwhile, the federal government has issued $872 billion in pandemic unemployment benefits as of September 30th. And as you know, a lot of the red states shut off that spending and the $300, which people are still fighting for. Lawsuits are up all over the place. We announce them constantly. Unfortunately, at least 10% of that might have to be paid back or have been paid improperly, mostly because of fraud, though. Fraud, though, is another one that is a huge been plaguing all the unemployment systems and you right that's more than 87 billion in mishandled funds it went so far as to involve organizational crime rings we got the mob involved right that's how lucrative unemployment fraud has been for criminals think about it you're guaranteed to get paid it's crazy andrew steiner as senior fellow and unemployment expert at the center uh, Century Foundation said, quote, I think the problem with unemployment fraud was serious and unprecedented, and I don't think the states were ready for how stolen identities could be used to take advantage of programs, not to mention people who also uh, got with friends and told them how they could actually grab money from the system. States didn't have much time to build them out with the right protections, and having a more permanent system would certainly help, end quote. This is so true. Also, we know that there were a large amount of people that said, hey, you can get these payments and got them, right? Even people paid a fee. I saw some places that were charging a fee to help you get your unemployment. I think you should be leery if you're paying somebody a fee to get something when you could just simply answer questions honestly and get it. Congress has since tightened up some of its documentation requirements to collect pandemic benefits. In fact, the Labor Department is providing another $240 million in states to help prevent and fight fraud in both traditional and pandemic era unemployment programs. So going forward, hopefully they'll be more accurate, which ultimately helps everybody because as many people on this channel know, their benefits were taken and some since the beginning of the pandemic, it's not been fixed. And facial recognition software, which is another thing that's controversial at the current moment. Finally, it's time for the jobs report update that we do every Thursday. We got to get into the unemployment numbers. The new initial filings for unemployment benefits jumped to 222,000, an increase of 28,000 from the prior week's revisited level of 194,000 initial claims, according to the Labor Department. Of course, you know we never like saying, you know, 
being excited about somebody going to a computer and asking for benefits that they probably would rather have a job. PNC chief economist uh, Gus Fra Frasher said, quote, although the plunge in unemployment claims was certainly welcome, it does not indicate the dramatic turn in the labor department. Claims are highly volatile, especially around the holidays, end quote, and especially around Omicron and other virus strains that pop up and scare people. Still, compared to this time last year, where unemployment claims were over 6 million new claims a week, this isn't looking terrible. In fact, we're looking better and better and better towards the recovery. Especially if you're the pro projected job numbers are correct, the, job, the Labor Department will release its full November jobs report tomorrow, so we'll be covering that. And the numbers are looking good so far. Non-farming payroll are expected to be 548,000 and the nationwide unemployment rate is expected to be around 4.5% down from the 4.6% in October. Of course, the labor shortages are still, still shy of the pre-pandemic levels. Then there's the concern over Omicron. Yep, Michael Laufer Guard, Managing Director of E-Trade Financial said, quote, while the drop backdrop of uncertain regarding Omicron definitely isn't helping the market, we're getting some relatively positive news from the labor market front. So we've seen it. With ADP and jobless claims coming in better than expected, we have to see if the full, un the full employment picture tomorrow can carry the torch to continue the forward momentum when it comes to jobs, end quote. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think the number, I know, we all know the numbers are not accurate. We know that it's just a gauge that we can look at. And the deeper numbers are deeper in the, in, and I've covered it, as bad as 45%. So it, it's been very different. Do you believe the numbers are good at 222,000 new jobless claims? Do you think people just have stopped filing? Have you stopped filing? Are you not getting those claims anymore because you would have dropped off the list? You're no longer looking for a job or filing? If you still haven't applied for unemployment assistance, get a head start on the wink. We're over the hump. Go ahead and fill out today. Most states, you can get your benefits 26, 27 weeks. It's been a federal law since the 30s. Make sure you fill out that unemployment ID yourself if you got to use the ID me with that facial recognition. Fill out the application as genuinely as possible. I know lots of people are, are upset about the facial recognition. I'm not real clear why they would be that upset, but it is what it is. Just be honest and truthful with the application. You could receive a backdated check for up to thousands of dollars if you have been out of work for a while and haven't claimed those. The PUA still, although under reform in lots of places and some, some places are paying out PUA claims that were backlogged. So for you, I'm excited. Um, the window to do that for 1099 gig workers, self-employed independent contractors, we're waiting on pins and needles hoping that we'll have a resurgence back into the conversation because it's a large part of the market that is a labor pool that doesn't get counted and doesn't get paid and just has to survive during tough times. So keep sharing your UI experience and your unemployment benefits in your state. Be safe out there. Love you. I'm Andrew Cartwright. Thank you for watching.